Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm G Sleeve Louise and today I'm going to be talking about my recovery from the vertical sleeve gastrectomy. So I've left the hospital and I'm back home with my parents, my boyfriend and my cat. I'm feeling pretty drugged up from all the medication but I just remember feeling so happy and so grateful to be home and so grateful of course with how well the operation went. Hey guys, um, I haven't done an update in a while. I'm home now, um, I'm still feeling pretty drugged and weird and a bit crappy. I think someone knows I'm not well. You can't come on my lap, mate. Uh, uh, Mum's tender. Oh, I feel really bad. Sorry. I feel so lucky that um, I've been able to keep absolutely everything down. And as far as I know, I haven't experienced any gas pain. Um, it must be the bad luck balancing out from before. I'm shocked at how long this has taken me to drink. Um, I've had this since hospital, so I drunk it. Really struggled on my um, slim fast protein shake. I got really hot and felt sick. The only thing um, that I'm not enjoying is just in and out of sleeping, like, and just feeling constantly high on drugs and just struggling to walk around and that. I'm a bit worried that I haven't been walking or um, drinking enough, but yeah, it's really hard. Um, it's so full and you can really feel the liquid go down as well. So I'm still on liquids at this stage. My hospital actually wanted me to have liquids um, from day one of coming out of hospital all the way to the end of uh, week three. So I've got this um, leaflet that tells me all the things that I could have on the liquid stage. So I'm just gonna read them out for you guys. Um, nourishing high protein fluids included, semi-skimmed milk, homemade soups, condensed soup, smooth yogurt, complan, build up, made up with milk, slim fast shake, sugar-free angel delight and custard, yogurt drinks, smoothies, Cow's milk alternatives, other fluids that I was allowed was water, sugar-free squash, vegetable fruit juice, tea or coffee, and of course stock drinks such as the Oxo cubes and the Bovril. Now something I didn't realise at the time, um, which I think is probably important to mention to you guys, is you may be aware of the half an hour rule that when you eat food, um, you're supposed to wait half an hour to then drink again. This is so you feel full for longer and the liquid doesn't flush the food out of your system. I didn't know that this actually meant, um, this actually included, sorry, the liquid stage as well. So when I was having soups, I didn't know that I had to wait half an hour to then drink because I thought it was all liquids but because it's nourishing and it's the good fluids that are full of protein I had to wait half an hour before having my water if that makes sense. <laughs> fluids were actually really hard at first especially the slim fast. I remember just being quite worried that I wasn't having enough because I just didn't want to drink. I just felt full up all the time. I actually found that hot drinks went down a lot easier or hot liquids rather than cold i remember being really annoyed that i would microwave um a soup or even have a cup of soup and the colder it got the harder and well the more i'd struggle with it basically so sometimes i'd end up like nuking soups about three times in the microwave just so i could get it down for the next couple of weeks, I was taking a hell of a lot of medication. This was to manage my pain, help me heal, and other things such as prevent blood clots or stomach ulcers. I actually ended up doing a whole story on my Instagram about the medication I took once I started feeling more with it. So I'm just going to put that here. But before you um, go ahead and watch this, I just want to, you know, put it out there that 
everyone's different your medication might be you know named something completely different or you may not even have the same medication at all that i had so this is my little setup right now <clears throat> i always have a cup of tea in case i struggle to take a tablet um with water because sometimes it feels like it gets stuck um, and i'm just about to take my paracetamol now so that's so with them i take two a day um four times a day that's the box there and i put it with juice or squash sugar-free squash because it tastes absolutely rank and it's the only way i'll drink it so what else do i have in here we have codeine um i take four of these bad boys a day they seem to be running out and i'm quite upset about it i can see why people get addicted to them to be honest they're great as you see I take so many medication that my mum's gave me a pink bucket to put them all in. It has been a lifesaver. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a tip for the future if you're pre-op. Get yourself a box. Something else we have in here is vitamin D and calcium carbonate uh, called Act, uh, Adcool D3. It tastes like lemon and it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm about to take that now and it's just one in the morning multivitamin standard everyone takes one of these once a day in the morning they're massive it's this one here it's really big and this is the one that i need my tea with because it's so big um centipods um i did i did have fiber gel which really helped me go to the toilet but apparently they're too harsh on my stomach so i'm taking two of these at night but i haven't gone to the toilet yet so Lanzoprazole, um, metoclopramide is an anti-acid or no, sorry, it's an anti-sickness tablet and I've got to take three of them a day. Um, they're really small and um, they're really easy to take so that's good. Last but not least we have tins of parin, sodium syringe, so that's my injection and I only have to do that um, once a day at night. Uh, 10 p.m. So yeah, that that's all my stuff there. If you're pre-op, um, don't don't be too um, put off. What really helped was actually writing a list of what you take, so it's not as daunting. When I received my medication um, at the hospital, I I barely even remember it. I was so out of it. So a word of advice is to make sure someone is with you when you are you know receiving the instructions for your medication they do give you a leaflet but make sure you do say to the person who's with you can you please read and double check over these for me because i had actually ended up making a few mistakes on my um medication i think a couple of them were um i didn't have enough paracetamol i thought i was only supposed to take two a day and i think it was four a day uh, also, I missed one blood clot injection, and what was the third one? Oh yeah, it was um, my multivitamins. When I was on a liquid diet, I took these really, really big multivitamin tablets that you had to swallow. And I didn't know that once you had the sleeve, you could change from the big multivitamin tablet to the chewable ones so it's a lot easier so there's me a day out of the hospital and I'm trying to get this massive tablet down me with a whole load of water and it was just so uncomfortable so yeah that's definitely something that I wish I would have known I was also given compression stockings um, to take home with me these were to prevent blood clots, but you were still expected, or I was still expected, to get up and move about as much as I can. I found it very hard to have the motivation to get up and walk around the house. Um, it was a mixture between being so drugged up and just feeling uncomfortable. I wouldn't say I was in mad pain, it was more uncomfortable. The compression stockings actually made my legs feel really sore after a while. I think it was like the third or fourth day. Um, I kept thinking, is it blood clots that I've got in my leg? But after calling them up, she did say that it was the, um, you know, the tightness of the stockings that was making me feel so uncomfortable.
In the first two weeks after um, getting the op done, I actually didn't go to toilet at all. I did call my team about this and they did say that as long as I weren't in any pain, um, you know, it's fine and it's to be expected. Luckily at home, we actually have a spare room and a spare bed in that room. So I actually stayed away from my partner from the, for the first week. So I'm now in my temporary um, healing room, which is the spare room in the house. I felt kind of emotional at how well everything's gone so far and um, how thankful I am to be here and finally be over the other side. If you usually sleep with someone at night, you're probably not going to be able to do that after the operation just because you are just propped up on your back and you know you can't risk anyone moving about and possibly you know hurting you by accident in the middle of the night so it's probably best to get that sorted out whether it's a spare bed or you know a chair or anything where you're going to feel comfortable and you know away from other people i personally couldn't shower or wash in the first few days after getting the op done um as horrible and embarrassing as it was i'll be honest and say that my mum actually gave me a hot flannel wash in the kitchen um it wasn't very nice but it's my mum she's changed my nappies so um i remember I just really wanted a shower but the reason why I couldn't was because I was so floaty I wasn't I didn't have the best of balance with all the codeine I was on um, and I was worried about getting my incisions wet and also I was just very rigid I was very rigid every every movement I was doing was very slow and very careful um, I did really miss my baths. I'm usually a bath person rather than a shower. I've, I've always loved having a long soak and um, I wasn't actually allowed to have a bath until four weeks after the operation, uh, which was really sad. I did ask why and it was so our incisions could heal properly. Um, so if your incisions do scab over before four weeks, it's most probably likely that you can have a bath. But until they've scabbed over, it's wise not to stay in the bath. I didn't actually have stitches um, when I woke up from surgery. I had surgical glue. So I don't know if that, you know, makes a difference on whether you can have a bath or not, or the time frame. During the whole first month of recovery, I was really naughty and um, I was weighing myself every day. I know I shouldn't have, but I was just amazed. Every time I popped on the scales daily, it, I was like sometimes a pound down, sometimes just under or sometimes just over a pound. I, I used to just go on the scales like, Jesus Christ, it just doesn't seem to be slowing down. You know, I loved it. For example, this is my lovely little calendar. Um, I weighed 214 on Monday, two days later, I weighed 211.2, that's fast. Day three was when I started to notice little improvements. For example, my liquid started to go down a lot better and I went all day without having a nap. I was napping, I think it was around four times a day, and I'm not a napper, I, I never nap, so that was really weird for me to, you know, just, just sleep so much. Day three post-op guys, I'm feeling good today, I know I don't look good, but trust me, I feel a lot better than what I look. Um, got up by myself, went to the toilet by myself, and came down by myself, feeling more independent. My fluids are going down so much easier today. It's such a lovely feeling. I've already had a tea and a slim fast and my paracetamol water and I'm about to have a slimmer soup. Oh, and I've started um, having my vape again. I don't know what you guys were like when you got sleeved, but I cannot stop. One, looking at my scars. It's like I've got a new tattoo. I love looking at them. Two, constantly reading my posts from when I went in surgery. I love it. It just feels so bloody weird to know that um, it's over and 
especially with me having that cancellation, I just never thought I'd get here. So I have to keep like checking to see if it is real and it is. Oh, so happy. Day four, I actually managed to lie on my side for a little bit. Um, I definitely wasn't ready to sleep like that, but I remember being really excited that I managed to do it, even if it was for about five minutes. The way I described trying to go on my side wouldn't even be painful. I was on so much painkillers, I didn't really feel pain as such. Like I said earlier, it was just more uncomfortableness and rigidness. Unfortunately that morning I do remember having a little bit of a funny turn. Um, I got up from my bed, I walked to the bathroom and I just remember feeling so dizzy. Not even just a little bit lightheadedness, like I'm holding on to the walls because I'm, I'm about to collapse dizzy. Um, this worried me quite a bit as I had no idea what it was so naturally I went on to my forums and Instagram and Google and tried to look up and I think what had happened was one it was the first day I went without a nap so I had slept all through and it was a long sleep it was around 10 hours also that was actually the longest I had gone without hydrating myself so I had absolutely no fluids in those 10 hours so I, I do suspect that could have had something to do with it as well I've been on my back all night that's made my blood pressure dr drop slightly and when I got up, I got up too quick. So that is one of my tips for you guys. When you are in the recovery mode, please make sure that, you know, you get up nice and slowly and you don't, you know, forget that you've been sleeved and just get up. Unfortunately, anxiety was a bit of an issue while I was in the recovery stage. I felt like I was constantly on the lookout for something that could mean that I was having complications from surgery. Some of the things that did concern me a little bit was one, I came on my period when I had only just finished one, I think it was like a week ago and I'd come back on already. Um, another one was obviously the pain in my legs at the time. I kept thinking I was having blood clots when it was the stocking. I was very phlegmy. Um, I was coughing up stuff quite a lot. Um, constipation at the time worried me, you know, when I had changed from fiber gel to senna. And also there was that dizzy spell as well. But my advice is if your anxiety is getting too much for you, you know, just call just call them. They've they've gave you their number for a reason. No matter how minor it may seem, no matter how much you think it's just you and your mind playing tricks on you, if it makes you feel better, then give them a call. I also believe that stress can contribute to recovery time as well. If you're stressed, I don't feel like you're going to recover as well. So to keep yourself as chilled as possible, just give them a call. It was day four when I did actually go out. Hello guys, um, as you can see, I've got makeup on and I've got dressed. I'm going to take a walk up to my Nana's today. She's like two minutes up the road. She's a bit of a warrior, so I've tried to make myself look as least pale as possible. Thank you so much for making me um, feel at ease earlier when I wrote that long post about me being anxious and shit. I feel so much better now. Um, but yeah, hopefully my Nana will feel better as well once she sees me looking all right. While I was there, um, the nurse gave me a call back um, regarding all the questions I had um, when I left a voicemail. Um, and yeah, it, it's pretty good news um, what she said. Completely forgot to mention to her this morning. I had so many things I wanted to talk to her about. I should have had a list. But yeah, I'm feeling a lot calmer, um, a lot happier. And um, I think that I'm going to be all right. Day five, I went to visit my other nan and other members of family. And day five was the day that I really started to feel like myself again. Obviously, I was still getting in and out of cars slowly and, you know, being careful. Um, I wasn't 100%, but it was the first day where I felt the best and the most happiest. And I just remember for some reason I had so much energy that day. I had loads of energy. Hi guys, um, day five post-op, uh, definitely feeling so much better now. I've still not washed my hair though, it's an absolute state. Yeah, all in all, absolutely, <clears throat> excuse me, 
all in all absolutely brilliant day um went upstairs by myself got dressed by myself washing by myself just becoming more independent um yeah i'm feeling so happy it was quite funny earlier because i like kind of forgot i had surgery which like isn't the worst thing to forget and i kind of walked into my partner's music and i like started doing like little grooving he was like babe what are you doing stop and i was like Oh shit! But yeah, apart from looking a bit pale still and um, not going to toilet, um, everything's absolutely fine. Um, all the other problems I had are sort of going away anyway. So yeah, um, day five and already I'm really feeling good. Day six was when I had my first shower. Oh, it was lovely to have a shower. I didn't go in by myself. My partner went in with me to hold on to me while I went and grabbed, you know, shower gel and stuff like that. Um, and just to make sure I didn't fall over. That was actually the first day I shared a bed with him as well. So that was nice. Even though I was like still propped up, couldn't really, you know, cuddle or anything like that. It was still nice to have the company, um, have someone next to me again. It was Valentine's Day as well. So, you know, shower, <laughs> shower together and um, getting in bed together. Not, not in the same way people might, may have thought, but you know, it was still nice, I guess. Into my second week was when I started experimenting a bit more with my fluids. Um, it was also when I started going back on my treadmill again to really start, you know, trying to make more of an effort with walking and getting my legs moving. Day 10, I actually had a proper day out um, with my family. And my partner sneakily did a little comparison photo behind my back because I hadn't done any comparison photos. Um, you know, I was only 10 days out of surgery, even though I had lost, I think I'd lost over a stone by this point. Um, I still wasn't quite ready to do any comparison photos. I was scared of um, getting you know, a bit heartbroken if I didn't see any difference, so I just decided not to. But my partner did one for me, and it was the first time I ever saw a difference, and I remember just being so happy when he showed me that, and um, yeah, that, that was really exciting. So f I'm starting to feel better, I'm starting to see changes, and I'm just feeling pretty good. Day 11 was, I must have been feeling better because I stupidly forgotten that I'm not supposed to do any heavy lifting during this time and I actually ended up cleaning my fish tank. I think I was pretty bored from being in the house and not doing too much. So I actually ended up lifting um, three heavy buckets of water twice. And that was really stupid and once I realised I immediately started panicking and I think I um, did loads, loads of Google searches saying, am I going to be okay if I damaged my stomach? But yeah, obviously I was fine. Day 13 was when I had came off all my medication. I think it was most my medication, the pain ones anyway. And I was feeling, I was starting to feel a little bit more miserable. Um, I was no longer floating around on codeine, having the best time. Um, I, I started feeling some pain. I started feeling a bit groggy and I wouldn't say I was having regrets but it was the first time where I started feeling like oh what have I done to myself I, I feel like crap it's my last injection today thank god I'm off all my painkillers um my codeine and my paracetamol so that's probably why um I'm starting to get m more miserable now I'm just not as happy and drugged up that was also the day I had had my first ever experience with dumping. Um, I'm now six months out of surgery and that was the only time I'd ever dumped and no food had ever made me feel like that. So basically what I had was frozen white fish cooked with sweet corn and vegetable stock blended into a soup. But the white fish was cooked yesterday, but it was only a day. About an hour later, I started to feel a couple of um, abdominal pains. You know, like gas pains um, in your abdominal area. And I kept going, oh. my tummy started going, bop, 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 bop. but absolutely nothing came from it. It wasn't until quite a bit later, maybe like two hours, three hours ish, that it started getting more and more frequent. And my mouth started watering like I wanted to throw up. But yeah, um, 
dizzy, hot. I started to feel my pulse, it was going quite fast. My anxiousness, my anxiety was just kicking in big time. I still don't feel right. I still feel like I could easily just run up to the toilet again. But I tell you what's really helped is the um, ice pops. It really, really helped. It's funny how I was saying, like, I'm waiting for something to go wrong. And today was the day something went wrong. I'm pretty traumatised. It's safe to say I never want to look at a bit of fish ever again in my whole life. A few days later, I started getting pain in my shoulder. Um, was it my left shoulder? I can't remember. But it was in the back of my shoulder and sort of around my back area. And I had no clue to what it was until I called up the nurse. I called up the nurse, explained the pain I was having, and she said it was gas pain. I actually didn't have any idea that you could experience gas pain so late. It must have been like week three um, that I experienced it. I thought you just, it was something that you got straight after hospital. It wasn't too bad. I mean, when I walked around and took some paracetamol, it went. So luckily, I think maybe I was having gas pain. It was just masked by all the medication I was having. Week three was when I had came on my period. Um, it was the first time in seven months, bar the little one I had before surgery. I didn't know it at the time, but that period was going to be 11 weeks long. So over two months long that was. Um, yeah, it was just awful. Apparently it's because of the massive change our bodies are going through in regards to like losing weight and stuff like that. Um, I had had a few tests for anemia, but luckily I wasn't mad heavy. Um, and because I wasn't in loads of pain, the doctor didn't have, you know, he didn't have too much to be concerned about. So yeah, I just had to ride it out and just wait for it to end, which it did eventually. The weight loss continued to be rapid and knowing me, I actually started to get a little bit worried about it. I think like, cause I've prepared myself, like it's normal to gain after surgery. It's normal to stall. The liquid diet, you do lose a lot on it. It might not be that fast. I've done all these things and it's done the complete opposite of what I've expected. So that was my recovery really. It wasn't terrible. There was some pain, there was, you know, some little minor things, but there was nothing really for anyone to be concerned about. There was a little episode here and there where if I turned too quick, I'd get sharp incision pains. It's all about learning to just go slow, get up slowly, make sure you walk slowly and don't just think that you're superwoman or superman and you can just, you know, start living your normal life again straight after the op because you can't. If you work, I would say that depending on your job, if your job is basically, you know, admin or any kind of office work, I'd say that maybe you'd be able to go back to work in two weeks. However, if your job involves lifting or anything like that, I probably would say about a month that you'd need to take off um, for your operation. But again, it's, it's best to ask your surgeon. This is just me going by my experience and how I felt around that time. So that's my video on recovery, really. I hope it's helped um, anyone that has any questions regarding the recovery period. I know it was something that I was a little bit concerned about when I was pre-op. But if there's anything that I haven't covered that you were hoping to know, please feel free to just ask the questions in the comment below and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you did enjoy it, please don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified of my future videos. And as always, I'm on Instagram. Um, my account is at G's underscore sleeve Louise. So please feel free to follow me if you'd like to see more of my progress or even message me privately. Thanks for watching. Take care.